Are you one of those people that is constantly losing your keys or losing your phone? I got a head-to-head -head comparison for Tracker and Proximo. We'll let you know which one wins. Welcome everybody, a Spike Studio product head-to-head -head actually, not even just a review, but a head-to-head. -head. We have is two different of those tracking items. Uh, I had both sent to me. I wanna make sure I put them against each other instead of just doing independent reviews, didn't make sense. Tracker sent me their wallet tracker and then Proximo sent me their tracker fob. So we have two different things. Uh, interesting name that this one says tracker fob and this is called tracker. So the tracker one comes in a nice little tiny case, uh, impossible to open as usual. This is their newer one. They sent me an earlier version, and honestly, I had issues with it, and kindly, as you can see, they sent me a letter with a new one. Said it's got a, batter, a better battery life, it's got a better GPS antenna, it has the crowdsourcing built in, which we'll talk about a little bit. What you get inside the case is a little bitty thing to hang stuff on if you wanna hang it, if you really need to. But the object of this one, the sizing of it, it's wallet size, you could put it in a purse, a backpack, you can put it inside of uh, your wallet itself if you want to. It's a little bit thicker than a credit card, as you can see. What it has is a slide-out tray on the top where the batteries are stored. It takes two batteries. They're both watch batteries, so you can buy them at any store to replace. Uh, the tray is hard to get out with your thumb, early warning. But I will say that's a good thing because you don't want it to be simple to pop out. But the batteries may go flying. <laughs> I found over time when I'm trying to pull this thing out, so I've been doing it slowly on the desk here and I'll show it to you in just a second. There we go. So uh, there we go. So there's two batteries that are in there, as you can see. One thing I don't like, and I'll be honest with them, is this one is updated a little bit. Uh, there's a plus sign that's on there and it's so hard to see. It's in, it's right there. I wish they could make it a different color. Uh, maybe the white or the orange or something. I can imagine somebody that really needs this may not be able to see the little plus sign. That's the part that needs to go up when you slide the tray in. Also, you need to make sure the batteries are the right way. So that's, so far, is the only thing I found about it. You snap the batteries in and it clicks, which lets you know it's in there. Now, setting it up, both of them have applications. Uh, the tracker app, and we'll put some screenshots up too, but as you can see, the tracker app starts out right away and says, add a device. So it makes it really simple for you to know what to do. There's no other options. You can't do anything else on the screen. There is a settings tab, but you wouldn't go to it. You would say add a device. Right now it's scanning. So it uses Bluetooth. So what does it mean for both of these? So for both the tracker and both for the Proximo, it means you should have a newer phone or iPad device. Definitely not one of the first gens. Definitely, uh, I would say iPhone 4 or higher, even though I think one of their things said three on one of them. So I wouldn't go with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the battery and turn on the tracker and it's blinking blue, letting us know it's in pairing mode. It's actually, found it already on here. So we'll select the tracker. It says connecting may take a couple minutes. Actually, it doesn't take that long. Now, it actually brings up and lets you know, oh, I'm connected, done. You can change and say exactly what it is. Well, this is a wallet tracker. So we're gonna say wallet tracker, done. We can give it a name and we can now start testing it. So it tells me the battery life as well in the corner. So I've got 100% battery and then I can actually sound the alarm on it. Let's hope it's not too... So if you're in the room looking for this with a simple click on the iPad app, we can already start trying to locate it. Now, I'm gonna put it down in my pocket. The problem with this is if this is deep in a backpack or in something else, you really have to listen for it. I mean, this is just in my pocket. I don't even know if you can hear it on the mic yet because I'm not in edit mode, but I can tell you right now, this would be hard enough. Let me put it, let's sit on it. Yeah, I'm sitting on it. So imagine it's under some clothes and some laundry. Listen, it's barely there. So you can stop it there, so we'll stop doing it. There's also a locate tracker. So as you say at the button, there's also a locate tracker. This will bring up a GPS map. If I click that now, of course, it'll show exactly where we're sitting. It's very accurate. The good part about what they're doing is they're enabling a new feature called this crowdsourcing. So I'm gonna click the settings button, which is very tiny at the bottom so you understand. Ooh, sorry for the light. Very tiny, so there's the button. Inside of this, there's an option that has this crowd GPS, on off toggle, that's all it is, on off. We'll put some screenshots. The object of this is that other people would scan and see the device if you have it enabled for such, which is cool. They don't know who you are. They don't get any personal information. It sends it up to Tracker and then says, if this person's ever looking for it, let them know the last place it was seen. I love that idea. That means the people must have the app. They also must want us crowd GPS. You must have it enabled on here. That's the whole idea. 
Example, Waze, the GPS application. The object of that is you're crowdsourcing traffic, right? That's what it's for is when you're driving, it gives directions. It's a mapping app. This is the same idea. I want people to help me find my device if it gets lost or someone steals something. You have this inside. Show me the last place it was. Are there good odds about getting it back? Not necessarily, but at least we know where it went. Last part is a couple of the settings that are in here. You can name it anything you want, so you can have multiple of these connected, which is awesome. So having, I think this one has eight or 10 that's available to connect. I'll get the exact number, I'll put it in the show notes. They both had a different number, but it's multiple devices. So you can actually have uh, their Bluetooth ones or key ring ones. You can have multiple things with this, it's just cool. You can actually set the alarm duration on here, currently set at three seconds, and you can set the device alert on and off. Right now it's off, and I'll set it back for the device to, let's say three rings. So this one's a wallet image. It has a name that's on there, the alert. Now we'll go back, we'll save this and just say back. All I did was move the slider one time and go back to home. Now, hopefully if this all worked well and the app is running with this, I should be able then to click it to find my actual phone, you would think, right? So we'll hold it down and see. So by holding the button on this, I'm actually to find the phone or iPad that I want to locate because I have my keys but can't find my phone. That is awesome. It had it on full volume automatically and it worked right away just by holding down this little button that's on here. So if we go back into the app one time, we'll hold this and we'll say sound the alarm. So it works both ways. All right, we'll turn that off. Now let's jump over to the other one. Proximo. So Proximo has sent us the key fob to find your phone easily. Now, what I like about, I'll tell you right away. I'll tell you one thing I like right away about the difference. So this is the packaging I got, and it had the tracker in it, right? You can read stuff, you can look stuff up. It tells you on the back a couple quick start things, which I really like. One thing I liked about this though, is it showed you on the front all the different types of things you can have in their app. I just really like the way they showed you. Oh, you can have multiple ones. This one, unless you knew you couldn't have multiple, this one shows you right away on the front. So we'll take this one out, they're fob. It's just a packaging thing, but that's what our shows are about is packaging, right? Now the size difference. So this is their fob. So you may be asking yourself, what's the size difference? There you go. What's the width difference? Much thicker. This is more of a thing you would hang on your key ring, definitely for your cars versus this. You would get a different one of these different tracker devices. They have all sorts of other ones. Go online and look. We'll put the links in the show notes, but they got the little buttons and little stickers. They got all sorts of cool ones with this too. So what do we get with this one? With this one, unfortunately, you've got a little more manual labor. The other one had a tray that we slid out that we just saw. This one on the back has a little bitty tiny screw right there. So what you get <laughs> with the case, besides the booklets, <laughs> is this. This little screwdriver and this little battery. So it doesn't take a lot of work. It's just funny that they actually don't put it in there uh, or have a slide out tray or have a little bitty piece of plastic that's in there. I do like the security on this because this is more like your key ring, right? When you do your keys, you actually have to unscrew it. So a couple twists of the screw. I like that they include a screwdriver. That is is kind of nice. And then you pop it off. Am I unscrewed all the way? It's hard to tell if you're unscrewed all the way or not is one thing. And this tiny screwdriver isn't the easiest thing to keep a hold of. There we go. So you pop off this little tray on the back. And then when you do, so what you get. So it actually has in there for you, which side goes down, if you look close, it has a little minus sign right in there somewhere. I don't know how this will zoom in right or not. It's somewhere in there, there it is, a little minus sign. Battery, standard watch battery, while the other ones, this is a 2032, that was like a 2016. They're both standard watch batteries. So we'll pop that battery in and the light will turn green when we do on the top. Yay, so now that the battery's in, and it has to click. It'll sit sideways and set it off, but it, you need it to click. It needs to be flat. Pop it on, tighten the screw. Do not forget to tighten the screw, please. And we are live. So Proximo is live. Now, one thing about this ring, people have complained about this online and I kind of agree. It's very, it's not, it doesn't snap out or in very hard. So that means you put on a key ring, it'll sit at an angle. So what some people have done is gotten a secondary small ring to put it on there to keep it more flat towards the keys. Just so you know, I've read that online. Uh, my opinion was the same. If I put it on the keys, mainly with your thicker keys nowadays that have all the chips in them. So what you get is a key ring that sits like this. Why do I have it up here? It's because I only carry one thing on my key ring and that's my key. I don't, there's never anything else I need anymore. So we'll fire up the Proximo app. Proximo app 
Same way, when you get inside of it, it says, hey, I see you have nothing. Let's go ahead and add it. I'm going to tap it to say add. It says, hold down the button on the fob until the light turns green. So let's do that. There's the light on the top. We're going to hold it down until it turns green. I'm going to watch too, just so there it goes. Oh, there we go. Authenticating. Already found it right away. It's found it. As you heard, it said, do, 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 do. says choose a name. So we'll put the name. Oh, gave you the uh, fob in there as the first choice. So we're giving it a name. We're going to say done. Now, here's where it gets fun with this one. So this works the same way. You can set off the device by using the fob. You can set off the fob by using the device. So this one has a couple uh, quiet zones, which we'll talk about, but it gives you the strength indicator, which lets you know how far away the device is. What does that mean, you say? That means if I move this device farther away, these lovely green bars are gonna go down. This lets you know in Bluetooth, it gives you a directional finder of sorts. Not the most scientific in the world. It's not perfect, but it does. So. I'm gonna hold this up. I'm gonna roll over here, put it over. As you can see, I left it really close. So it's still got full strength. But you know what? We're good and live here in the studio. So let's do this. Threw it outside the door in the studio. <laughs> so now we're down to three bars. So it lets you know it's not within range anymore. So let's talk about how it actually works and what the sound's like. So right now the alarm is off. I'm gonna turn on the alarm feature. And I'm going to say find. So that's out there in the hall. So let's get it back. I'm cup. Okay. T tap the dashboard to stop. Dashboard. Okay. So let's talk about that. It said find. And I did. And it says tap the dashboard to stop. When I tap the dashboard, it meant the little button that said dashboard. Not anywhere on the dashboard board. Maybe they want to say tap the word dashboard. The problem is the word dashboard is this. I'm going to do it again, but it's this little tiny word up in the corner. The whole screen is just like nothing but this big image. So watch what happens again. Now this is something they can fix in their UI. Take it how they want. We're going to say fine. Notice the big screen. We're going to put that quieter for a minute. Notice the big screen. Notice everything is there. Sorry for the light. There we go. Notice the big screen. It says tap dashboard to find. Well, dashboard is just that little bitty word up there. I would hope I could tap somewhere on the dashboard once I found it. Something, guys. This is, oh yeah, this little word up here. <sighs> there you go. Okay. Now, the opposite should also be true. I should be able to use this to find the device because I turned the alarm feature on. Now, let's talk about what some of the settings are and then we'll do it. You can set different sounds. You can set a fine sound. You can set the alarm sound. It shows you the status. shows you the battery's okay. Uh, it says alert continuously. So we've got all those capabilities. Doesn't have the crowdfunding. Keep that in mind. So we'll go back and we'll hold down the button on this. There we go. So we've set off the one on the alarm. We'll turn it off now that we found it. That one's quite obnoxious. So one thing they did do in the UI is you can hold down on any of the items on the screen to actually get the help files. So you can say, is the target within range? What's the actual bar type? So all these are in there, which is really nice. So I can actually hold down on all these and it'll give me help files. That's something cool that they did inside the UI that the other apps don't do that I really liked. So for both of these, what do we think? We think that both of them have good range, uh, both of them Bluetooth range. Both of them, you can find the device and you can find the fobs. So that works well. Uh, multiple fobs, they got a fob. Uh, multiple of these with a better UI, as you can see, right? They're giving you different choices. So I've, you know, you've got pets, car, you can label them with a different icon, basically. What's it for? So what's the fob for? Yes, you can hang this on your pet. What we didn't cover for these is out of range. So what that means is once your phone or your iPad or whatever gets out of range of these, it sets off the alarm to let you know it's too far away. That could be highly obnoxious if you are always walking away from your keys and you keep this on your keys, like I do, you throw them down somewhere near the door and then you're off inside of your home or office. You don't think about it anymore. You're wandering around. You'll set off the alarm. Keep that in mind. Uh, but if there's something you need to keep close all the time, you could turn it on temporarily and just remember to turn it off when you're walking too far away later on. So maybe when you're at an event and you don't want your keys to go too far away from you, maybe you turn on the alarm temporarily. Or when you're uh, at a place of business and you want to make sure your stuff stays really close to you or you're out at a public cafe, you could turn on the alarm and turn it off later. So that's the proximity stuff. Uh, I do like that. 
Uh, what else do we have in the dashboard? I do like in the dashboard of this one, there is some tutorials that are in there that let you know exactly what's going on. You could play all these different helps, videos. Uh, you can get more, uh, more devices. You can get more things about Kensington. You can ask questions. So they have those built into these and you can build a huge list of devices when you're ready to go. I did appreciate that. You can also change your image file if you want for the icons for these. Um, you can take a photo, you can choose from your directory, anything you want to do. I like that for both of them, that you can set your own images. Uh, overall, what do I think? I like the numerous amount of available different ones that they offer for Tracker. Honestly, they offer a whole bunch of different ones that you can have. Like I said, the buttons, the wallet ones, the fobs. Uh, I do like the proximity searching for this one, definitely. Uh, the ability to know just just directionally where the heck the thing is, even though it's making a noise or whatever, I do like this. The maps, they're the same for both. It's going to show you where it was last seen or where it is. This one, though, has crowdsourcing. This one does not. This has the new antenna. I haven't seen any difference in range between the two, but I will say with the updated device they sent me, it has stayed connected much better. Before, I had some issues with it disconnecting every so often. Another thing. This one had better mapping capabilities, honestly. This one, not so much. This one was great at finding. This one was better at mapping. How many times are you actually going to be able to go back to wherever the map says it is and find it? I don't know that answer. But at least you know that it's available and it's there. So head-to-head, -head, the tracker versus the actual Proximo. This is by Felon Halo. This is by Kensington. I don't have a clear winner. I'm going to be very honest with you for this one. I think they both have their own purpose. I think they both offer capabilities. I think they both need a couple things that they need to do to uh, clean up a couple areas. Uh, definitely app side. Definitely this one with the little plus thing inside of the tray. Uh, this one would be great if they had some mapping capabilities and some different shapes and sizes for those that are available. But otherwise, uh, I'm going to let you decide below in the links. I'm going to put my updates out there. And if anything else I find out, I will update the blog post. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe to all the product reviews from Spike Studio. And definitely, definitely click yes and let them know that we're helpful. And you know what? Jump to Amazon. At least let them know our reviews are helpful all the time. Thanks again for watching.